friends it's Bevla here over at Crafting Chaos and this is going to be my beginners series for the downloadable version of Brother Canvas Workspace and I'm working on a Mac though I think the layout will be very similar on a PC or Windows operating system. So what you've got at the top here and I'm just going to make it a little bit less big if you will so that you can see what's going on here and what I've got here is the window open and at the top I can see file edit layer display window and help like you can on a Mac but going round it for a start is just what we can see so we've got the usual shapes tool text tool which means we can use all of the fonts on our computer import FCMs and FSV SVG files tracing elements, drawing a straight line path and then a free hand curved path. We've got our undo and redo buttons, our select, our hand tool for moving things around, our zoom tool which we can zoom in on a particular part and also the zoom that we can increase by percentage and I'm just going to take that up by a little bit. And then coming down the other side, we've got this paintbrush, which is properties, which has operations. So, for example, I'm going to now, before I go on to any further of these menus, we're going to bring on a simple shape. And what I'm going to show you how to make and save in this video is a frame that has a scalloped border. So I'm going to bring on a scalloped rectangle and an ellipse which is just an oval shape in my book and I'm going to do this so I'll just take you through those steps again click on the shapes icon which bring out the shapes there are now in order of style so we want the ellipse which to me means oval I'm going to click on that one that has the scallops and I'll choose which one I like best so I'm going to go with this one and then I want a plain ellipse so if you just click on them it brings it onto the mat then to get this out of the way just click on the shapes menu again and that will close it for you now now that we've got something to click onto this gives us more options up here so we can see at the moment that this is showing at 40% we've got the selection tool so I can select and move things around on my mat when we're on the hand tool we can move the mat around but not the shapes so that can be useful and then this is again where we can zoom in on something specific like so if we wanted to we can wherever we need to zoom we can hold the eyeglass there so it zooms and if we want everything to go back to the normal size, we can go on this display at the top and click the one that says zoom all objects on mat. And that will zoom your mat down. So zoom all onto mat. And or you can use the this one to decrease the size with the down arrow. You've got fill and draw. So the line is in black and there's no fill if you wanted to fill the shape you click on fill color that will bring you up a selection of colors you can use and click any color you wish and that will fill it for you so I'm going to leave one not filled and that one filled so now we can see the line width is one point if we want a thicker line we can increase it like so or decrease it like so which could be useful if you were taking it to a draw line because that would mean you could make the border as thick as you like. So now I'm going to take that back to a cutting line and take that back down to one for now. Okay, so I'm just basically showing you around the basic icons for now. And then you've got what you want it to cut a straight line or you could have it a dash line or a dot dash line or whatever is in this. But I just want it a line for now. So now if we look over onto this side, we've got a paintbrush, which really is just a repetition of what we can see here, except we get um, other things for our font. So if we had the font highlighted, these would then become usable rather than the shape. So I'm just going to click on that, make sure we're back on that one. 
and now we can see that that's a cut line which we want it to be and that's a cut line that we want it to be this this is the properties box the one that looks like a paintbrush then the one that looks like a window with a corner edit with a little square at each side is the edit button and in there we can see the x and y position so that's telling you it's 0.4 inches across and it's 1.99 inches down okay to there so it's almost that top of that shape is almost on the two inch line here and it's almost at 0.5 so if you moved it to 0.5 if you change that to 0.5 and that to two oops I didn't undo because so I've just deleted it so if, sorry if I change that to 0 0.5 and then change this to 2 like so now what that actually telling you now is it's exactly half an inch from there and two inches down so that's what that x y is for this tells you the size of the object so at the minute it's 3.94 inches wide and 3.03 inches in height at the highest point and the widest point and you can either resize it by keeping the aspect ratio the same and that will increase the size of the shape proportionally which is what we're going to do so i'm going to do that now so we can see that that is getting bigger and you can do that as much or as little as you want dependent on how big you want your frame now I'm thinking that when that's finished that's going to be quite a nice frame. The other way you can resize is if you take off that will enable if I just make a duplicate now of the oval I can show you what happens if we make that now 2 it's going to keep the height at 2 but it's going to shrink it down to 2 inches in width. So you can set an oval at any size or shape you wish. So that takes us on to the transform. Transform by angle just means that you would rotate. So if we put 90, that will rotate the shape by 90 degrees. And we can undo that. Or we can flip it. And it's not going to look any different if we flip. But we can flip it on the vertical or the horizontal axes and if I just bring on a non-symmetrical shape for a second so let's bring on let's say this one this wedge we can delete it when we're finished if I now flip that on the horizontal angle you'll see it's changed it over to that side and if I flip it on the vertical it flips it so that it's that way up so you get the mirror image if you will then you've got the align function, which is what we're going to use to create our frame. So you first of all, drag an, an imaginary box around both the scalloped oval and the plain oval. And we need to center that blue plain oval into the very, very middle of the scalloped oval. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to center it and I'm going to put it in the middle. So that now is exactly in the middle of this scalloped one. And we need to see that that's on top. So we can do that by clicking on the blue shape. And if we click in the middle and it selects the blue shape, that's telling us it's on top. If we click there, we can see, and that one's on top. Or alternatively, we can go to the layers menu and we can see that this one is at the top of the stack. Now, let me just click off. If I drag that underneath that one and click on, now when I try to click in the middle, it's selecting the white shape behind, which is because now that's on top. But for this purposes, I want the blue one on top. So when I click, that is on top. So that's the layers palette. The only other one to think about is the artboard. This can you can change the size of your map from a 12 to a 12 by 24 or keep it at a 12 by 12 you can have it in inches or millimeters your measurements when you go to do your measurements or you can have show the ruler which will put a ruler around the sides which can be handy just to bring offer up a shape if you want to have a rough idea of where you're going with it you can show the matte image 
or not show the matte image so that just leaves you the cutting area so that's the whole mat that's just your cutting area you can have show grid or you can have it plain white or you can have and you can also this snap to grid instead of moving if you wanted to move this one to the left and you were doing it with your arrow keys like so you would have to keep clicking and clicking and clicking if you wanted to do that quicker and you wanted to put it to a particular grid line say i wanted to put it to the sec the two inch grid line across if i now hit snap to grid and i hit that it's going to go across and it's going to snap it i can go back that way and now i know that the very end of that is on that two inch grid mark so I'm going to take that off now. I'm just going to drag an imaginary box around everything again. And I'm going to go on to edit. And I'm going to centre it and middle. Just to make sure everything's in the middle. And then what I'm going to do is whilst we're in this edit mode. I'm going to select both shapes. And I'm going to go on. Come down to near the bottom where it says process the overlap. And we are going to subtract. What that's done now is it's punched that hole out and this is important if you want to weld anything if you don't do that step and try to weld with that shape still in situ and if i just go back and make a duplicate of that and i'll show you the difference between the two and i now remove the overlap from that one if i take a duplicate of that one and move it off to the side and this is just to show you, select both and weld. It will weld so we can see, and I'll just put some colour so that you can see it. You can see now that we've got the two frames welded together. If we tried to do something similar here, and we've made a duplicate and we try to weld these. Now, so what you would effectively had, you can only see it really clearly because that's showing you in... Um, so that's what you'd have and effectively it lo does look the same as what we had down here but what we've actually got remember that's a separate shape so when you now try to weld it well sorry when we go on to this icon and try to weld it sees everything in both inside that that's uh, the oval that was inside there so it will sees this one this one that scalloped oval and that scalloped oval so it's going to weld that oval to the the other oval and that oval to this oval so that then when you weld it's do doing all that at once and then welding the two ovals together so you can see although that might produce a really quite a useful map for something it's not actually what we might want to do so i'm just going to undo that and go back to there so what you would be doing, and I'm just going to delete one because we don't need both. When you want to create a frame, actually doing that selecting with the one that you want to punch out on top and subtracting is really important. Because when you flood fill that now, you now have, when we go to the paintbrush icon, we can do flood. And we'll flood it with a colour. And that now is just, just a frame which you can now, if you wish, you can weld letters to. So we're just going to put a big sort of um, B for Beverly's Crafty Chaos. And I'm just going to drag that out to make the B bigger so that it'll fit inside my frame like so. And then I can weld my B to my frame. Whoops. So select them both and then click on the edit icon and weld. And that would weld the B to the frame so now you can see the difference if you try to do that without that punching that that oval out step you won't be able to do it so that's the first video on how to create a frame what you would do then is click on file at the top export FCM file and you would give it a name call it frame and save it possibly to your desktop where you know you'll be able to find it later okay that's it for now there'll be more simplistic videos coming as we work through 
um, how Brother Canvas Workspace works for the downloadable version now that I can ha use it for my Mac. I hope you've en enjoyed it. This is more geared toward more new newer people to um, Canvas to help them sort of get used to the idea of what's possible and what's not. I hope you'll enjoy it. I hope you'll enjoy the series and I'll look forward to seeing, seeing you all watching my videos again soon. Thanks and goodbye.